Welcome once again to The Simple Truth. We're in that time of year that we're uh, buying Christmas presents and Christmas is almost here. Uh, so today I just want to talk about Christmas giving. And, and it's not going to be what you might think about us giving, but what God has given us. We've just gone through that time of Thanksgiving uh, where we've had friends and family over or we've gone to families for dinner and, and we have enjoyed the company of those things. And, and I want to just read Psalms 100 and start with verse 4 and 5, the last two verses of that Psalms. Uh, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful in him and bless his name for the good, Lord is good. His mercy endures uh, is for everlasting and his truth endures for all generations. You know, the Lord's not just good. He's good all the time. And we should be thankful for those things. And we should, we should uh, give thanks for all the blessings that he has poured out on us. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today. Uh, uh, it's not going to be the same kind of Bible study I usually do. I, I understand. Um, we'll get back into that next week. But uh, have you ever just sat down and thought about what God has given to us? And I'm talking not just at Christmas time, but as the years go through and the years past and the years to come that we may have, all the things that God gives to us. We could start out with um, in Genesis when uh, God created all things. And then on the sixth day, he created man. And he molded man and then he breathed into him, giving him life. Well, he's given each one of us life. And, and he wants to be a part of our lives as we live. But there's more than, than just living this physical life that we're in. There's that spiritual life that he wants to give us, that he wants us to be a part of. And so uh, when we read in uh, Luke chapter 2, the Christmas story of, of his birth that we, we've all read during this time of year or we was preached on, I want to touch on it because that's where the beginning of blessings start. And it says in verse 4, chapter 2 of Luke, Joseph went up to Galilee and out of the city of Nazareth and Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. Because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be blessed with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days was completed for her to deliver. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swallowing clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And you see here the birth of Christ to us, that God came down to us from heaven and dwelled among us. Now, God knew this was going to happen. Jesus knew this was going to happen. They were a part of the plan before the foundation of the earth that, that this would happen. And even though we knew that he knew this was happening and we understand that it happened, we sometimes forget that it's not just the baby in the manger that we celebrate. It is the season that we're in, but that season should be year round. Do you realize that God has not quit giving? Through his son, he's given us all things. He's given us so many blessings in our lives, everything good that comes to us. God has provided for us. Everything we have, God has given to us. Now, I realize some say, well, I work for this or work for that, but, but can I be honest with you? God has allowed you to receive these things because he's that good all the time. He wants us to prosper, not only in physical things, but spiritually. And that's why he brought his son, that we should know how much God loves us, and not only how much he loves us, but how much he gave to us. And you know the rest of this story, that Jesus was, was crucified and died on the cross and rose the third day. 
That's the gospel in a nutshell. But how many times do we think about all the things that he has given us? Do you realize your, your breath that you're taking right now is a God's gift to you, his giving to you? Have you read in his word all the promises that he has for us? Now, I want you to understand, I am not one of those people that, that says name it and claim it. I very much believe that all those giftings and, and all those promises that God has for us are available to us, but not until he tells us they're ours. They have to be initiated by the Holy Spirit. In us. That's one of the great things that God has given us is his, whole, his Holy Spirit so that we can communicate with him. You know, Jesus said that my sheep will hear my voice. And he's saying, I don't want you to be a robot, but I want to talk to you. I want to spend time with you. And we can do that in prayer. And, and many times I'm not even in prayer and I, I, I hear his voice tell me that I need to do something or, or I need to look at something or I need to be aware of something. And all those things are things that he gives us. But the, but the promises he gives us, uh, they are initiated in our hearts. The word tells us that, that God's, God gives us the desire of our hearts. And, and sometimes we misinterpret that, that we think that whatever I desire, that's what God's going to give me. And it's more what God puts in our heart that he will give us. And the same way with the promises. I... I know of times when people say, well, you know, God had Peter walk on the water. And I recently heard a sermon about something that mentioned that. And it said that Peter didn't walk on the water. He walked on the word. When Jesus said, come, Peter got out of the boat and walked. And you see, and that's, that's how I, I view his promises. When God says, this is for you then we can claim it. But only when God claims it first for our lives. He's given us a plan for our lives that we have a chance to follow or reject, but that choice is always ours, whether it be for now or forever. You know, he gives us a choice. If we would accept his son, we can, we can and live for him or be obedient to that voice that we've been talking about. He will give us eternal life. He will give us the things that we seek. Well, first of all, we need to seek him. And then all these other things will be added onto us. And so it is him first that we seek. And he gives us that knowledge to seek him. He gives us a, a, an inner desire that we should seek him. And yes, we have a choice of whether we uh, accept that desire or we reject it. But God always wants us to seek him. And when we will and we truly seek after him, we have so much that God wants to bless us with us. Not just a baby in a manger, not with just his sacrificial death on the cross, but he wants to give us him, his voice that we can hear, that we can know that it's him. He gives us a measure of faith, and, and the thing about a measure of faith that he gives us we have the opportunity to grow that faith and not doubt. Doubt is a faith killer. But he gives us faith in times and times when I remember in the word where he talks about a, a man says, Lord, help my unbelief. And he's not, not saying, <laughs> help me not to believe. He's, he's saying, Help take away the unbelief that I have in my heart. I so much want to believe that I'm going to be healed. But give me what I need. 
And so hard, it's so hard sometimes for us to think of, well, I need this, and yet God wants to give us this. We have to humble ourselves at times before Him. We have to be willing to, to accept sometimes the things we go through. You realize that God said, I will be with you. That's giving of Himself to each one of us to be with us to the end of the age. And I think about those things, and I think, why, why someone, you know, what are we that... The God of the universe that created everything wants to spend time with me or with you. And yet he does. And it's out of his great love that he gives towards us that if we will receive it, all these things can happen. You know, he has giftings for us. And I find that many times that those giftings takes me above anything that, that I could do myself. I think about this program that, that God has called me to do. He called me to it. This is the last thing I would have thought about doing, being on TV. And yet, it's His program. And He gives me what I need to do this program. He gives me the time to study. He gives me insights, his wisdom at times for what I'm teaching. He helps bring me in contact with others that are maybe teaching on the same thing or has taught about the same things. And it's like, remember that. You'll use that. And he's given me those little nuggets. I have a commentary that, that I made, met the man just the other day about uh, that wrote them and took the time to go in depth in, in, in all those things. And it's like, you give me this time. You've, you've provided this for me. You gave it to me when I didn't even know I needed it. So many times we look at, at things around us and we think, I got that when it's been, he's gave it to us. You know, we, we, we've talked about his birth, and, but in John 3.16, which is a, a nutshell of, of God's giving, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who should ever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the gospel in a nutshell. But then with verse 17 has to be added to that. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Do you realize that God has given that gift to the world, his son? Do you realize not only did he give his son, but Jesus did it willingly. God the Father did it willingly. The Holy Spirit was willing to give that we might be saved. And that, that in there, he gives us that possibility, that choice of whether I accept it or reject it. And I hope today that as I'm talking that somehow I have reached out and, and, and said something that touches you that, that instead of being might you are insured with salvation because that's what God really wants from us. That's what he wants to give us the most. He wants to give us eternal life. But not just in the hereafter that we talk about, but to talk about now that I can know that I'm saved, that I know that he's given me eternal life. And though I'm playing it out now, I'm walking this walk He's guiding my foot. He is given the path that I'm to go on, and, I, and I'm trying to follow it. I think about the old hymn that says, count your blessings one by one. When's the last time that you counted your blessings? When's the last time you gave thanks to God for the blessings he has given you uh, of family, 
of the friends that you have, the church that you attend, the church that you will attend in the future, the opportunities that, that divine appointment that God will put in your way for you to touch someone else's life. You see, when I, when I think about these things, I have to go back and I think about in Exodus chapter 35, and I think it's verse 5, where God tells Moses, and I'm going to paraphrase it for you, those that have a willing heart give. And then he tells what they're to give uh, for the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness. You see, that gives you an idea of God's heart. Those that are willing to give, that's God's heart. He's been willing to give all these blessings to us. And, and basically all we have to do is be willing to receive them. And how we receive them is sometimes us giving. Giving our time. Caring about other people. And yes, I know that it's time of year that as we go into that Christmas season, we talk about trying to get the best gift for the right person, you know, making it just right, just what they want. But it's really all about the love of God that we are showing through those gifts, showing people that we care. In my beginning of the ministry, I did quite a few funerals, and, and it's, it seemed like a lot of times I would hear one, someone say, I wish I had it said, and then they would go into this story of, of something that the deceased had, had done for them, and they never said thank you, never took the time, and here at the funeral, when it's too late to say it, they're reminded of it. Have you ever thought about giving thanks, appreciation to someone at the time? Maybe it's your, your favorite restaurant and the waitress that you have many times. Have you ever really thanked her or him? What about your pastor? Have you ever really just said thank you to him other than that time of year when we have pastor appreciation? Well, he's worked all year. That waitress has worked all year. Your friends are with you all year. Have we really ever taken the time to, to give them thanks for what they have done for you? You see, as God is willing to give to us, we should be willing to give too. There are many charities out there that, that, that would appreciate a donation. Uh, there's so many things that, that are God-given, that are God-based, that, that, that we can biblically follow this example of, of free will giving, that we give it from our hearts, because that's exactly what God has done to us. Freely, willingly given it. Sometimes we think, well, that was his plan, and it was just his plan. Well, yeah, but, but he had to be willing to do it. And I wonder, are we willing to give that much? Um, I hate to put it this way, but to give to it hurts. That's what God did. That's what he's doing, not just at Christmas time. Not just as Easter when we, when we celebrate the risen Christ. He gives it every day. Every hour, every minute, every second, God is showing us his love. Whether it is being blessed or we're going through a trial, his presence is always there. Because he's told us. Lo, I will be with you to the end of the age. 
He's with you right now. If you know him. You see, God wants us to be in tune with him. To be one with him. How many times have we heard Jesus say, I'm in my Father and my Father's in me. Uh, they were in, a, in unity, in one accord, um, and the Holy Spirit in there too. Uh, so the three of them are, are together, and all three of them are willing to work through your life. We can claim that. Lord, work through me. Paul said it in, in, in a way that, that really tells, it's not I that live, but Christ who lives in me. That he has given us that life that can be uh, meaningful, can be uh, worthwhile, can be prosperous. Not only, not only can we be prosperous with money and, and know how to use it to, for the kingdom and how to touch other people's lives, but, but also for ourselves. You see, God provides your living. Again, God has given of himself to you isn't it right for us to give of ourselves to Him? To continue in the works that He's put us to? Whether it's teaching the Word or preaching the Word or working behind the scenes of helping, all those giftings, God has laid it onto the church in, in hope. I don't care what denomination you go by. It is us, the church, that is working with Christ through us to touch lives. Whether it's ringing a bell on a street corner, whether it's baking a meal for a family, or delivering it, or many of the other aspects about it, Maybe you're giving rides to the doctor during the year or to the grocery store. And you're doing it from your heart. You're doing it for a time that, that uh, may even be inopportune for you, but you've given sacrificially. And that's what Christ has done in our lives. He has given his life sacrificially that you and I may have eternal life. God has given us the model of prayer so that we can, we can pray to him in a right way. We can praise him and then ask for the things that he's put on his heart, our hearts to ask for. Whether it be finance or spiritual or physical, it's all there. And then we give him praise for knowing that he will do these things, that he's heard our voice because, because we have that personal relationship with him, that he's been willing to give to us if we will be willing to accept it. I've heard it said, and you probably have too, we can have as much of Jesus that we want. Well, he has given him totally to us. How much of us have we given to him? I think of these things and I'm blessed by these things and I know that, that the things that I have he's given to me and, and it's only temporal. Someday he may ask for them back. I have to be willing to give because he's been my example to give. So at this Christmas time, just don't just think about the right gift for the right person or, or donating to, to a particular ministry. 
think about what God has given you. I, I, I said it earlier, count your blessings. Look around you at the things that are there, the people that's in your lives, and count those blessings one by one. And then you can enter into his court with thanksgiving. You enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name for all these things he has given to you. Not just here at Christmas time, but he's given it to us all year round. I'm thankful that he provides for this program. I'm thankful that he provides a studio to do these programs and the help that helps put it on. I'm thankful that he can put it out on, the, that somehow he puts it out on the, on the internet and, and recently I heard someone who, who had no dealings with the Quincy area but they'd seen the program. I'm thankful for those people who, who say, keep it up. They didn't just click through, but seen it. And those are God things. I have nothing to do with those things. It's God puts it on your heart. He gives you those desires. And he gives us the desire to continue in the work. So as you think about these things this year, praise him for what he's given you. Praise him for the people in your lives. Praise him for the people in your church. And praise him just because he's worthy of your praise because he has given so much year round to you and I. I'm thankful for family. I'm thankful for my friends. I'm thankful for church. And I'm thankful for the people he puts me in contact with, whether they believe in him or not. But I'm thankful because he's given me that opportunity to talk about him and to give of self. So at Christmas, Merry Christmas. God bless you. I love you. He loves you. We'll see you next week.